Plague Marines. Retro 90s Plague Marines. Plastic and metal ones. In this video, I'm going to paint some and discuss their rules for 2nd edition Warhammer 40k. It started with one. This test model. It continues with six more to put a smile on Nurgle's face. Plague Marines, servants of Nurgle, the Lord of Decay. If you've watched some of my other videos, you may recall I'm in the process of constructing the second edition Chaos Army of my dreams. But so far, it's just Abaddon and his Terminator bodyguard. Armies of this edition didn't have to be from one legion. They were a veritable tapas of traitors, marines and demons alike. So of course, I'm going to get a bit of everything in there. And the flavour of the month here is Plague Marines. Plague Marines. And just to give you a bit of warning, there will be a Plague Marines song at the end of the video. So you can stay tuned if you want to listen to it. Or not, if you see the Miniscape logo, you can bug out then. Cheers. In 2nd edition, had a number of interesting rules. Regular squads had the same profile as a vanilla Chaos Space Marine, but with plus one toughness, because of their mark of Nurgle, representing the numbness to pain afforded by their decaying brains and bodies. This bit of fluff from the Codex is worth a read. Plague Marines have disgusting rotted bodies that stink of decay. Their armour and weapons are pitted and corroded by the putrescent slime that oozes from their many sores. But they are still fearsome opponents. Their decaying brains are inured to the agony of their bodily corruption, making them all but immune to any pain or discomfort caused by battle wounds. Squads could be comprised of three to nine models, and in addition, an aspiring champion could also be added, though he must take the mark of Nurgle, and he can even have Terminator armor. Each Plague Marine is armed as standard with a bolt gun, blight grenade, and plague knife. One model may be armed with a special weapon, such as a flamer, melter gun, or plasma gun. The plague knife was a nifty little shank, which was a close combat weapon, killing outright any opponent who is wounded on the roll of a six, regardless of how many wounds they have. Then there's the blight grenade, Grenades that, when thrown, will persist in the environment for potentially the rest of the game, depending on the dice rolls. Any models, within two inches of where the grenade lands, will be hit on a 4, 5 or 6. A separate roll for strength is made against each model affected, but a roll of a 1 means the grenade has dissipated, so a strength 1 hit versus the respective target is resolved, but no further models are affected and the blight marker is removed. These blight markers are included in the codex to photocopy, or to cut out if you're an agent of disorder. Each hit only causes one wound, and armor saves can be made, but no saves can be made from energy fields or dodges. Dreadnoughts aren't affected, and models with the mark of Nurgle are also immune. Indeed, they probably like it. Blind grenades will persist until a 1 is rolled for strength, and they are triggered whenever a model, friend or foe, moves within two inches of them in future turns. Wow. So, a potential minefield creator. Nice. Interestingly, the law states that these blight grenades are made from the shrunken heads of the victims of Nurgle's plagues, filled with virulent pus and infected biting flies. Oh, lovely. So that's the rules. But what about the miniatures I'm using? For this project, I have chosen six retro Plague Marine models to go with the one I already painted at the end of last year. That makes seven in total, which is Nurgle's special number. Apparently, so is three, so that makes Nurgle greedy since the other ruinous powers have but one number each, but there we go. He is the god of stench and gluttony, it seems, amongst other things. So a squad of seven it will be. The six I'm going to paint in this project will be these. Three made of plastic, and three made of metal with some plastic parts. The white one was a gift from my friend Jan from the Czech Republic. Leading the squad is this plague champion with a plague knife. He's not wearing his helmet, but he does have a gas mask on. The gas masks and spiked helmets really draw me into these old plague marine models. 
They're grim, dark, and goofy at the same time. The model has one metal shoulder pad with the symbol sculpted on and a swollen abdomen like the rest of these models. Of course, some are more swollen than others, so I don't know. Maybe some plague marines consume more cream cakes or apple pie or something, I don't know. The plastic parts are the right arm, shoulder pad and bolter, which I took from my Traitor's Bits box, but they are second edition era appropriate. The backpack is also plastic and is one of three kinds that were available at the time. All three were available on one sprue. A range of designs were available, but all had the characteristic elongated vents employed by Chaos Forces. I've tried to use this design for my Plague Marines though, but I don't have enough for all of them, so I have to use some of the other kinds. And then there's this other Metal Champion model, who we shall say is the Champion's Lieutenant or whatever. He also has a bare head and sports a grimace, probably since he has removed his gas mask and has to breathe clean air for once rather than the flatulations of Papa Nurgle. I swear their breathing apparatus is to give them a continuous supply of Nurgle's wind, but that's just my twisted imagination. Anyway, I think his face otherwise looks too clean for a plague marine, but never mind. Perhaps he has found a skin specialist after all in the Eye of Terror. Anyway, I like the details on this sculpt, such as the plague knife sheath, the gas mask, the crumbling armour, and his spare face on his belt. So that's how he stays so fresh looking. Well, either that or it's a blight grenade, a shrunken head filled with flies and odour vomit. The final metal model is this chap with the melt gun. I like how rugged it is compared with the loyalist melter gun, and it reminds me of heat guns used in DIY. Well, I mean a melter gun is a heat gun I suppose. Anyway, it also has this timber casing which other plague marine weapons have, which is quite humorous when you think about it. And then we have the three plastic dudes. These are the monopose plague marines from this box set which were the smelly equivalent of the Monopose Corn Berserkers, or the Imperial version. They were Monopose except for the arm, which could be positioned at any angle. Well, not any, since some angles would be ridiculous, and I doubt Blake Marines are contortionists, they won't point backwards or whatever. I mean, you could also position the backpack upside down for more variety, but that would be silly, even by Nurgle standards. I have gone with both barrels of boring here and positioned their bolters either forward or slightly down. I didn't point any of them up because my lads conserve ammunition, they don't randomly fire their guns in the air and go, ah. The bolters have the wooden casing again, which, well, I don't really get, but it seems to work with these. Like the metal models, they have a groin flap with the symbol of their god on it. I suppose if you are known for decay and stench, then this is as good a place as any to put such a symbol. The feet always amuse me too, very hoof-like, and the helmets were part pickle helm, part duck. I don't know why, but whenever I see them, I always see duck. The base you may recognise, since it is the same as the one from all the other monopost sculpts at the time, such as the Space Marines, Orcs and Gretchen from the starter box. My intention was to paint the Plague Marines like this chap, whom I painted back in December as a test model. I suppose I am painting him like Death Card you see in the Horus Heresy, mainly bone coloured with a hint of green. But for the rest of the squad, I will have more green armour panels. So I first sprayed these with grey primer. No good reason to be honest, I really can't think of one. And after this had dried, I slapped on my favourite base coat for rusting and decaying models. The wonderful Humbrol 251, which is my favourite brown paint ever. I feel it makes a great shade for lingering in the recesses, being somewhat like some corroding metal as I use an old brush to paint this all over the models, covering every last square millimetre, leaving no grey showing at all. There, all of these got the same treatment, a good base on which to build up the decay. Now the next step is probably skippable, it was dry brushing the model Tan Earth which is a lighter brown to pick out some of the details, purely just to make them more obvious later on. It also gave a better base to accept the next colour which was dark sand. I used two thin coats to carefully paint this on most of the armour, the greaves, the arms, the shoulder pads and most of the backpack, save the pipes, cables and the recesses on the vents. If I missed a couple of spots then that was fine. 
since the brown showing underneath gives the idea that the armour has corroded and decayed, which is of course to be expected if you throw in your lot with Nurgle. Notice I have left a few places on the armour brown. These are the panels that will be green. My green of choice is this Vallejo German uniform. Not that German uniform colours from World War II were consistent, but that's a can of worms I just don't want to get into. Ask anyone who's into World War II tabletop war games, and you'll know what I mean. Anyway, I bought this paint years ago for my bolt action models. It's quite a muted colour, but this is how I wanted my Plague Marines to look. As you can see, Dark Sand is definitely the majority colour still, but we'll come back to that later. I mix some of the German Grey with Dark Sand on my wet palette in a roughly 50-50 ratio. I used this to raise the brightness of certain areas that I had painted green before, and also to do a few edge highlights. For the sharpest highlights, I mix the same two paints again, but one part green, three parts sand, and use this for the edge highlights. I wasn't concerned too much with painted sharp lines on every edge, but instead using the edge of my brush to paint jagged lines, or simply just tapping the edges here and there. It's a faster highlighting method and is meant to sell the idea that the armour is worn and weathered, so it's a win-win for this scheme. Next I turn my attention to highlighting the sand areas, which I did much in the same way as with the green, but this time using a mix of sand and white for the first pass, and then just pure white for the last pass. I felt like the sandy parts of the armour needed some shading, so I mixed in some skeleton horde contrast with flow improver so I could glaze the pertinent recesses. I made sure to end my brush stroke where I wanted the shading to be darkest. Once the first shade was dry, I repeated this process on the same areas, but covering a smaller area. I also went in on the middle of some armour panels, such as the arms, with one coat only. This was purely to add more of a starker contrast between the edges and the middle of the panels. And that's how it looks after the shading step. Next, I dug out the gun metal and stippled this tentatively on the plague knife, on the pipes and the tubes on his backpack, respirator pipes and on the shoulder pad trims amongst other places. The stippling is to leave some of the brown showing beneath, to sell the dull and partly oxidised metal effect. This treatment is applied to some areas of the bolter as well. Following this step I carefully applied Fenrisian grey to the edges of these areas as well. Now I considered using a brighter silver metallic, and on another flavour of model I would totally do that. But for this chap, again, I wanted a duller metal. So this grey becomes my highlight, but only roughly so. I used the same colour to line the ridges of the under armour at the back of the legs and between the arm joints. Finally, I used some white to edge highlight the knife and paint some sharp lines across to emulate scratches and the like. I repeat this on the metallic areas that would catch the most light, as you can see here in the case of the respirator pipes. I also edge highlight the shoulder pads with this colour. Now what is weathering without some rust? For this. I mix some water with Trollslayer Orange and tap it into a few recesses for the knife only. For instance, in the indents between the serrated parts of the blade and around the hilt. The rest of the armour gets the Nihilac, is that how you say it? Oxide. I suppose I'm saying here that the knife is made of an iron alloy and the armour a copper based alloy, judging by the colour of the corrosion. It doesn't matter if this is not true in universe, I just wanted to use these colours in these places. Orange for the hydrated iron 3 oxide, or rust to the layman, and nihilac oxide for the copper carbonate corrosion for a lovely verdigris patina. Anyway, chemistry aside, you can see I have been conservative with the green, dabbing it into a few recesses where it is likely to accumulate, such as the rivets on the shoulder pads, or the vents on the backpack. Such areas would be more likely to retain water droplets and therefore would be prone to such corrosion. And as I am no stranger to the brush, so is a plague marine no stranger to rot, of flesh and of metal. Like with other helmetless chaos models of mine, I started painting the skin screamer pink, then I mixed this with barbarian flesh and used this to add some highlights. 
I continued to lighten this flesh shade with white and dark sand until it was pallid enough for my liking. Perhaps not pallid enough for some of you, but I wanted a redness here too to imply swelling and rashes on the skin. There weren't many more details to do, so I applied a decal to the shoulder pad with Micro Sol and with Micro Set, followed by a coat of matte medium to flatten it all nicely. And that was the champion done. Now, I painted the other plate greens in a similar fashion with pretty much the same steps as before, with just a little bit of experimentation here and there. For one, I didn't keep the locations of the sand and green consistent. I wanted the squad to be similar but not uniform, so this was a simple way to do it. For example, on some models the bloated belly was sand, while on others it was green. The same could be said for the armour panels and the backpack. When painting the sand, I tried mixing it with tan earth on some models just one drop of tan for a few drops of sand and it seemed to have better coverage. After the highlighting and shading steps it tied in well with the other models that just had dark sand. In future I will probably go with the mix rather than just the sand alone. And what I liked about painting these was that most of them did not have their arms in front of their chest so all the details were easy to access. On a few models I was much more liberal with the skeleton horde, slopping it all over the parts painted with dark sand. This required another layer of sand to brighten up some areas, but it didn't take a lot of effort. On another model I dry brushed it white right after the base coat of brown, which definitely saved me time later painting some of the details on the cabling. By the way, notice how most of the plague marines have exposed cables beneath their rotting armour? I attempted to paint these gunmetal, then Fenrisian grey, as with the respirator on the champion. Every model got some rust somewhere, whether that be on the knife or around the bolter barrel. I stuck with rust on the weapons only, and verdigris on the rest of the armour. Now most models had some timber on the casing. I painted this flat brown, and then highlighted it with dark sand, just with the gentlest edge of my brush. On the melter gun, I painted the barrel purple and blue halfway up and gave the end a dry brush with black to show the expected muzzle burn from such a weapon. As usual, I based it with local sand. It's far cheaper than those Citadel texture paints, though a bit more effort is required. When I have sealed the sand with dilute PVA and when all of that has dried, I painted the whole base top and rim with tan earth, followed by a dry brush of dark sand. I considered painting the rims green on the base, but on the model I tried this on it didn't really go so well, so tan earth it was. It was just clashing of colours, you know. You'll notice I used red on the plasma coils of this plasma pistol, which if you look carefully I've highlighted orange. It seemed like a fitting accent to the existing scheme. For the decals, I use various Nurgle-like icons from this decal sheet. There's not much in the way of uniformity here, and I'm not sure the Plague Marines are into that sort of thing anyway. There's probably little time for art when your body is all puss and gangrene. As always, the final step with these is a little tuft of grass on the base. And there we have it. Seven Sons of Nurgle. Seven Retro Plague Marines. Four Plastic and Three Metal. I feel like painting all of these monopos would be fine, but the seasoning of the squad with a few metal models improves their look as a unit in my opinion. Anyway, here they are in all their stinky, putrefied glory. So let me just pause for a minute to admire them. I don't think I'm done with Plague Moons yet. I'd like an icon bearer and some more metal models. Chief on my wish list is this guy with the power fist. I also think I'd like to kitbash some myself from some random parts of other marines that I have. I think, like the orcs, followers of Nurgle lend themselves well to kitbashing and converting. But that won't be for a while. There's many more things I want to paint first. But stay in touch. I have plenty of other retro Warhammer projects in the works. 
and you never know, more than one of them may tickle your fancy. So if you like what I do, then please check out my Instagram. And with that, I better go paint some more minis. Take care, and thanks for watching. Two, three, four. Plague Marines, smelly rotten space marines. Plague Marines, with disease their bodies team. Plague Marines, and they're losing intestines. Plague Marines, poison knives to stab their foes. Plague Marines, so numb they cannot feel their toes. Plague Marines, smell a bit like tin sardines. Plague Marines, tossing fire grenades of blight. Plague Marines, in a ghoul they do delight. Plague Marines, never visit the latrine. Oh, Plague Marines, 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 Plague Marines. Plague Marines.